Hello, thank you everyone for staying until the last talk of the conference. So I'm gonna tell you how to run Turing machines on encrypted data. And this is joint work with Shafi Goldwasser, Yael Kalai, Vinod Vaikuntanathan, and Nikolai Zeldovich. So computing on encrypted data is an old and important notion in cryptography. And so far we already have various primitives for computing on encrypted data in various ways. The first that comes to mind is fully homomorphic encryption, or FHE. But you can also think of Yao garbled circuits as computing on encrypted data, and even functional encryption, and even attribute-based encryption. All of these have in common the following abstract model. An input X gets encrypted into a ciphertext, and then an algorithm A gets converted into a cryptographic representation that we're gonna call evaluation key in this talk. And then one can use the evaluation key to perform the evaluation over the encrypted input X and obtain A of X, encrypted or unencrypted. Now let me give you an example on Yao garbling, which most of you should be familiar with. So uh, algorithm A, represented as a circuit, gets converted into a garbled circuit, which corresponds to the evaluation key in our abstract model. Now, the garbled circuit is just pretty much the original circuit, but the gates are replaced with a list of binary strings. Also, an input gets garbled into a set of binary strings, and now we can run the evaluation using the garbled circuit over the garbled input and obtain A of X. So actually, almost all the schemes that I mentioned compute on encrypted data algorithms represented as circuits. So they model computation as circuits. The algorithm first gets converted into a circuit, and then the evaluation key is generated for the circuit. And the circuit model is very inefficient. So let me give you an example why. So consider you have an algorithm such that if the input is five, then the algorithm repeats 10,000 times something very slow but otherwise it finishes fast. Okay, so this algorithm runs very fast for almost all the inputs except for five. And a natural example of that is the simplex algorithm, which is a popular algorithm in linear programming that on most instances in practice runs very fast, but on rare instances it runs in exponential time. Okay, so now we need to convert this algorithm into a circuit. And the way we do this is we unroll every computation to the maximum number of steps and consider every branch of the if branch. Okay, so what we get is we get a circuit whose size is the worst case running time of the algorithm over all the inputs of a certain size. And the evaluation key is at least as large as that circuit. And this is quite inconvenient because we have to communicate this evaluation key, we may have to store it, and when we perform the evaluation over the encrypted data, then this evaluation also runs in worst case running time of the algorithm even though the algorithm runs very fast on almost all the inputs. So much more appropriate model of computation are Turing machines, because the description of a Turing machine is short and does not depend on the running time of the Turing machine. And also the Turing machine runs for different length of time on different inputs. So the goal in our work is to provide schemes for computing on encrypted data for Turing machines. So at the high level, this is our contribution. So we provide schemes, constructions for all the schemes I mentioned before, garbling, functional encryption, attribute-based encryption, fully homomorphic encryption, for any polynomial size Turing machine, polynomial time Turing machine, uniform or non-uniform, where by having a construction for Turing machine, here's what I mean. First, we have a short evaluation key meaning that the size of the key just depends on the description of the Turing machine and not on the worst case running time, not even on the running time. Second, the running time on the encrypted data is input specific. So what I mean by that is that the evaluation over encrypted data depends on the time to run the Turing machine on the specific input and not on the worst case running time. Of course, this inherently means that the evaluator learns the running time on a specific input, which sometimes leaks information about that input. So for some schemes, such as functional encryption, we require a weaker security definition. But we weaken it in the minimal amount of way, 
So it's the original security definition, except that now the evaluator, evaluator also learns the minimal, learns the running time on the specific input X. And since it's a weakening, it's basically optional. We provide two types of schemes with and without uh, this weaker security definition. So in one type of scheme, you have input specific runtime and the weaker security definition. And in the other type of scheme, you have worst case running time as before, the security definition as before, but the scheme still enjoys the short evaluation key. Okay, so more concretely, let me tell you what are the schemes that we construct. So first, we construct reusable garbling for Turing machines. Basically, instead of garbling a circuit, we garble a Turing machine. And the size of the garbled Turing machine is gonna be short, it's just going to depend on the description of the Turing machine and not on the worst case running time of the Turing machine. Also, the evaluation is gonna be input specific. So let me tell you what I mean by this more concretely. So, so far we have garbling schemes for circuits due to Yao and then after that a fruitful line of work. And recently we have schemes for RAMs due to Lou and Avstrovsky that basically have a more efficient way of accessing memory. But the size of the garbled RAM and the evaluation time of the garbled RAM is still worst case running time of the RAM. Also, until recently, garbled circuits could only be used one time, meaning that if you garble, a second input and hope to use it with the same garble circuit, then this jeopardizes security. Okay, so you can only garble one input. And recently, uh, Golvas Retal constructed reusable garbled circuits, meaning that you can actually garble an unbounded number of inputs that can all work with the same garble circuit without jeopardizing security. Okay, so what do we provide in this talk? Well, now we can garble algorithms represented as Turing machines. And the size of the garbled Turing machine is just the descript, depends only on the description of the Turing machine, which is much smaller than the running time of the Turing machine and the worst case running time of the Turing machine than the circuit that represents the Turing machine expanded out for the maximum number of steps. And the scheme is also reusable, but even for one time garbling, it wasn't known how to garble Turing machines. And we also provide input specific evaluation time of the garbled Turing machine. Second, we provide a single key functional encryption for Turing machines and attribute based encryption for Turing machines and for RAMs as well. So I'm not gonna define functional encryption, I will just define attribute based encryption later. But if you remember from various talks before, in a functional encryption and attribute-based encryption, one provides a key for a function. And in our case, we're gonna provide keys for Turing machines. And again, these keys are gonna be short, depending just on the description of the Turing machine and not on the running time of the Turing machine. Again, we achieve input-specific runtime. And the state of the art was four circuits due to Gorbunov et al, Goldwasser et al, Garg et al, and also Garg et al. Okay, and finally, we provide a variant of fully homomorphic encryption for Turing machines, which has the nice property that the homomorphic evaluation over the encrypted data runs in input-specific time and not on the worst case running time. And Goldvas et al. also had a similar goal, but the result was for a restricted class of Turing machines and had an expensive preprocessing step, step which we remove. So, Currently, there's a lot of effort in making FHE practical and their implementations at Microsoft Research, IBM Research, but even if FHE becomes very fast per gate, so additions and multiplications become very fast, it's still going to be inefficient if the evaluation always runs in worst case runtime, for many cases in practice. So we think that an important step towards making FHE practical is to adopt input-specific runtime, as in our work. And finally, in comparison to previous work, our assumptions are new and stronger, and I will present them at a high level. Okay, so let me give you an overview of how we obtain our results. First, we construct AB for Turing machines and RAMs from two primitives, extractable witness encryption and SNARKs for NP, which I will define at a high level. 
Then we construct functional encryption for Turing machines, single key and succinct ciphertext from our AB for Turing machines, regular FHE and regular Yao garble circuits. And we do so using a reduction of Golvasser, Kalai, Popave, Guntanethan and Zeldovich that we mo modify and adapt to work with Turing machines. Finally, we construct reusable garbling for Turing machines and a variant of FHE for Turing machines, again, using the reduction of Goldwasser et al., but from the functional encryption for Turing machine scheme. So the main novelty, technical novelty, in this work is in getting AB for Turing machines, so that's what I'm gonna focus for the rest of the talk. Okay, so what is AB for Turing machines? Well, the syntax is very similar to the one for circuits, you have a setup algorithm that outputs a secret key and a public key. Then with the secret key, you can generate the key for a Turing machine. So keys are tied to Turing machines. Then with the public key, you can encrypt a bit B for a public attribute X. And then using the key and the ciphertext, you obtain the bit B if the Turing machine on X is one, but obtain nothing otherwise. And the security pretty much says this, that B is hidden if the Turing machine on X does not output one. And X and the Turing machine are public. Okay, so there's been a lot of previous work on attribute-based encryption for circuits. This is our AB theorem for Turing machines. It's a reduction from three ingredients, extractable witness encryption, SNARKs for NP, and the signature scheme, and we obtain AB for any class of Turing machine and RAMs with runtimes that are bounded by a polynomial with the following efficiencies. So the encryption algorithm runs in time that only depends on the security parameter and not on the depth of the computation as in previous work. The key generation algorithm runs in time that just depends on the description of the Turing machine and not on the worst case running time of the Turing machine. And the decryption algorithm runs in time that depends on the actual running time of the Turing machine on the specific input X, and not the worst case running time. And you've got to have decryption depend on that running time because at some point you have to run the Turing machine on X. So from the standpoint of functionality, this really is the ideal functionality you'd like to get from AB. Of course, an interesting open problem is to get the same result from more standard assumptions. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a high level overview of the main steps in our construction for ABE. I'm gonna skip many details, but basically there are two steps. First, we're gonna use extractable witness encryption to get an inefficient ABE scheme, and then we're gonna make it efficient using SNARKs. Okay, so what's witness encryption? It's a new notion due to Garg, Gentry, Sahai, and Waters. That's basically an encryption scheme without keys and without key generation. To encrypt with respect to an public language NP language L, you basically just encrypt a bit B with respect to X star, which is an instance of the language, could or could not be in the language. Then anyone can decrypt who has a witness for X star being in the language and obtain the bit B. And in terms of the security definition, if X star is not in the language, then you have semantic security. So let me put this security definition in an, in an equivalent form. Basically for all X star, if there exists an adversary that breaks semantic security, then X star must be in the language. So we actually need a stronger primitive, which we call extractable witness encryption, that says that if the adversary breaks semantic security, then not only is X star in the language, but there exists an extractor that can extract a witness for X star being in the language. And we can construct this stronger primitive from the same construction of <coughs> Garg et al by making their assumption extractable. And we prove the new extractable assumption secure in the generic group model as a sanity check. Okay, so let's construct AB for Turing machines. Quick reminder what we need to do. So we need to generate a key for a Turing machine M. We need to encrypt a bit B with respect to an attribute X, and then we need to be able to decrypt B if M of X is one, but get nothing else otherwise. Okay, so let's encrypt with witness encryption. 
OK, but for that, we need a language. So what should that language be? Well, let's see what we need. So what we want is to be able to decrypt the B to B if M of X is 1, and we have a key on M from keygen. So to ensure that we have a key on M from keygen, let's just sign M in keygen. Okay? So the secret key for the Turing machine M is just going to be the description of the Turing machine and the signature on M with the secret key of the AB scheme. Simple. OK, so now we want to be able to decrypt the bit B if M of X is 1 and the signature on M verifies with the public key. Well, that's our language. OK, so our language just consists of pairs X and public key with the following witness, a Turing machine M, a signature on M that verifies with the AB public key, and the tableau of computation of M on X that is accepting, so M of X is 1. Okay, so now we just encrypt uh, the bit B with respect to the instance X and public key. And here's how we do the decryption. The evaluator computes M on X. If it's zero, it outputs bottom. If it's one, then it can compute a witness because it has M and a valid signature on M from the secret key for M. And it can compute an accepting tableau of M on X because M of X is one. OK, now that it has a witness, it can decrypt the bit B. OK, so let's see what we achieved so far. So the secret key for the Turing machine M is short. It depends on the description of the Turing machine, as I promised you. However, the ciphertext is large. It depends on the worst case running time of the Turing machine. And here is why. Well, to check the witness, we need to check the tableau of M on X, which pretty much means run M on X. And because of the construction of witness encryption, the ciphertext will be as large as the time it takes to check the witness. So to fix this problem, we need to make the witness checking fast. So the idea is to, instead of having the tableau in the witness, let's just put a short proof that M on X equals one. And we're gonna use SNARKs due to Bitansky, Kanetti, Kieza, and Tromer. And these will in allow us to have a short proof and to verify this proof fast, okay? And other properties that I'm not gonna go into that we need. Okay, so now that we can verify the witness fast, we have a short ciphertext. So this is at a high level our scheme for AB for Turing machines. Okay, so in conclusion, I showed you how to construct AB for Turing machines and I mentioned our result for AB for RAMs. Also, I mentioned our results for functional encryption for Turing machines, single key and succinct, reusable garbling for Turing machines, a variant of FHE for Turing machines, about which you can learn more in the paper. Thank you. Are there any questions? So actually, oh, yeah. So your scheme is single query secure. Can we use the idea of uh, last crypto paper, paper, paper of Goldbun of Fetul to boost the security of, for example, Q query? Q queries? No, because they use randomized encodings, and I, I don't know how you do that for Turing machines. So no, it's single key and not bounded collusion. What is it that prevents you from running on a Turing machine that has worst case running time worse than polynomial? Oh, uh, sorry, can you repeat that question? So you, you said that your scheme only supports Turing machines whose worst case running time is polynomial. Yeah, yes, uh, good. So the SNARKs, so SNARKs are for NP, so you have to be able to write down an NP language, uh, who's, which means you have to have a P checking. So there has to exist a polynomial that you can check all the members of that family. All right, let's thank the speaker again.